Ladies and gentlemen, my name is in the game Kaya, and welcome to ITGK Survives Arc Day by Day. Uh, where we left off. Actually, I should have double checked where we left off at the uh, end of the last video. But um, I was going to look for more Argentavis, which is what I was doing in the middle of the night here. And I, I found this uh, supply crate with nothing in it. So, I, I've heard that loot drops in ASA are really good, and honestly, I have some experience with that, but sometimes it feels like they just, that, you know, they don't want to cooperate, you know? But yeah, I'm out hunting for Argentavis. I flew across several mountains, and I started eventually killing them just because I needed, I needed better Argents, ones that weren't, you know, level 45. So, fight, fight them, kill them, harvest the bodies. If nothing else, you're getting primed for when the, uh, when you do find an Argent you want to tame. It, it took me a long time to actually find an Argent that was worth taming, because I needed a good one. I was not going to settle for something that was just mediocre or a placeholder. But that meant killing several Argents through the night, all the way into the beginning of day 13. And thankfully, uh, my Pteranodon was more than capable of hand handling Argents, as long as I took them on one at a time and, and took things slowly. So, um, I was continuing to fly around Metal Mountain and just looking for stuff, and all of a sudden I hear trees fall and that thing comes out of the trees. And, yeah, here we go again. I swear, man, I hate these things. Of course, it's partly my fault for luring it into the redwoods, but still, there is no way to get away from these things. Maybe if I was on a Tapahara, maybe then... I could get away, but Rhinos are just so persistent, they, they do not let you rest. It is crazy. They will not give up. I tried to rake them off on trees, on other creatures, and they don't seem to run out of stamina at all. And the PT, the Argent, they're not going to outfly it. And plus, it's level 125, so I can't just kill it. And, uh, bro, these things are so insane. I gotta get my own at some point. Which, uh, hey, it'll be nice when that happens, but that's sometime in the distant future at this point. Because uh, I have to be able to kill males to get the pheromones to tame them. So now I'm running through the woods on foot, chased by this rhino. Still won't give it up, and uh, yeah, now there's raptors, so I'm dead. And now all my stuff is gone. Again. Those rhinos. I think it's the same rhino that killed me before. It's just, it's a problem. And now I need to go and tame more stuff. Because I left my Argent at the top of Metal Mountain. So I, I have to go back and get it. But that means taming a Pteranodon. I was very determined to tame myself a very good Pteranodon if I could get one. Just at the very least something to get me to Metal Mountain. But I needed something that could operate in my trap and get me another Argentavis if nothing else. Even still, it'd be nice to have a, a good Pteranodon, so I was ready to head out, and then I spot these across the bay. So, my long journey to find a high-level Pteranodon ends five feet from home with a 140. Honestly, not bad, all things considered, because I was ready to go sailing around the island looking for one. Now I don't have to. Very convenient, and... Right next to home, so it's easy to ferry resources to it and stuff. I just have to go and, and collect stuff for it. But that meant I wanted Prime to tame it on as much Prime as possible. So the, the easiest way to get Prime this close to South Beach? Boas from the swamps. They're fairly easy to kill, if you know what you're doing. Not too, too dangerous. At least not in full flak with a crossbow. And 
and I go from killing one snake to killing a second snake. But at least I'm going to end up with some prime after this. Because I, I need to get something with teeth so I can just go running for meat or whatever. I keep forgetting that because like, I, I get so focused on Argentavis, they're so useful that at times I get almost obsessed with with making sure that I have an Argent and having a good level Argent and then having that Argent do everything. I use it to kill things, I use it to harvest, I fly it around the map everywhere, but then when I need to do something a little bit closer to home or whatever, then I don't have that, you know, other tame, like a Carno or, or something, which I could totally have at this point. So I went and knocked out another Pteranodon and was going to tame this one. So I just kind of left it and went back home and made up some narcotics and stuff. Just, uh, you know, working on getting some gear back up and making sure that I have equipment and, and weapons on me. And I went back outside and it's not done taming. It's not here. So with no tracker down there, that means that it's dead. Something ate it. I'm not sure what. I don't think I ever found out what. But now I can go back to Metal Mountain and get Cloud Runner 2.0 and hopefully find myself a decent Argentavis. Because I'm still on the hunt for one. I need, need a good one. At the very least, a second one. So I got this one. A 145. I would say that's a pretty good level. One, one off of the max. And, uh... I just need to lure it all the way to Metal Mountain, which can at times be problematic. Argents have a tendency to just kind of turn around and fly away for no reason. So, like there it goes away and then it comes back at me again and now I'm trying to work on getting it into the trap and it's almost stuck and it flies out. I'm trying to lure it around. I end up getting a second Argent stuck on me. But this ends up being ultimately a blessing in disguise because as I go in and trap one, the other one just flies in for me. So now I can kill the lower level one that I don't really need. Whistle passive so that terror doesn't get in the way. And now I can knock out the 145. And with this corpse right here, easy prime. Boom, perfect. I can throw some meat in, throw the prime in, and we are good. And time lapse. I uh, just kind of stood next to it and let it tame. all the way into the night. But it tamed without issue. So now I have a level 214 Argentavis. I can take the saddle off of Cloud Runner, put it on the high level Argent, and away we go. Back home. Bring the birds home. Gotta go park them. I want an egg right away. I, I can't afford to lose Argents again. Now that I have decent ones, I need to start working on breeding the decent stats in so that I have, you know, at the very least, backup birds. And I forgot to unwhistle the Argent. So I don't have to park, park it again. Because I'm an idiot. But, um, yeah. Something I often forget to do because I get, like I said, obsessed with progress is the importance of making sure that you have a sustainable place that you can build up from to reach a new plateau. So I had a plateau, but that plateau was below Argent's being tamed. Now that I have two, and they're of different genders, now I can breed, I can make eggs, I can hatch eggs and raise Argents. 
and I'll have backup birds. No problem. So just make myself an egg quick. And get started on the hatching process. So that I never have to emergency tame an Argentavis again. I can just fly backup birds. Make a quick metal run while I'm waiting for the egg. And uh, decided to go out resource gathering, which includes silica pearls. So I went uh, out to the ice and went fishing for silica pearls. This is like the only spot, other than the pearl caves, which I'm not 100% sure where they're at. Um, this is like the one spot in the map where I know pearls spawn, is along the shore on the northwest coast. So every time I need some, I come out here. Also, I find it weird that the... I think I said this in my last video. The water here is warm. Warmer than the air. Hang on a sec. I gotta save my bird. Bring all the mats back home. And craft up some fur armor. So I gathered some pelt while I was out in the north. And I needed to uh, have stuff so that I didn't freeze to death if I ever went up there again. And get started on hatching that egg that I made earlier. Now I've decided uh, to start improving the base. Built a staircase, started working on the roof a little bit, but this isn't actually a roof. Uh, this is just the beginning of the second floor. So I build my staircase up, and now I can at least reach the second level, but I need to do so much more than this. Um, I like... I, I wasn't sure how I feel about it at first, but I like that they squared off the edges of the spiral staircase. Here's the baby. And it's a 216, which is honestly, like, perfect. Exactly what I needed. Um, I am using a mod to just kind of make a shortcut that automatically transfers the best stats. So, um, very, very easy, very convenient. It just saves time. Like, it's not giving you anything you don't already have. So, I feel like it's pretty good. Also, Carrier Pigeon. He's back <laughs> after I killed him in ITGK Survive Season 1. So uh, continue working on this roof bit. And I've kind of mapped out in my head at this point what I want that second level to be. And there's just so much base work to be done. So the next couple of arc days are going to be a little bit shorter in terms of gameplay because I don't end up accomplishing too much. I do a lot of base work. First of all, I need to expand the size of the second floor. I'm going to go one further out. So, the same pattern that I had been doing before when I built the tower. Uh, squares on triangles, triangles on squares, all the way out. Just trying to make sure that I, I get everything lined up so it looks nice. And then put these uh, slanted roof pieces on back towards the tower, including triangles for those strange corners. I ended up doing a lot of harvesting, and I started uh, raising a pteranodon as well. So we've got that argent growing, we've got that pteranodon growing. Just gotta finish roofing off this uh, section here and then I can start working on the second floor. The second part of the tower is going to be a little bit more industrial. That's where I plan on keeping my forge and probably my chem bench and I made space for vaults. We'll see how many I end up putting in but I did make space for vaults and then eventually the vaults will become tech dedicated storage but I'm a long ways from that. 
I decided to put these pillars around because I felt like it helped to add some life to the structure. And then we're going to add these little supports on the outside of the tower to give it a little bit more character. Now the beginning of day 15, just working on framing in this uh, upper piece. Trying to uh, piece together what materials go where, how it's all going to look, and then mirroring that all the way around. But I have a pretty good idea. These uh, little supports are going to be made out of stone all the way around. And then the inside pieces are just going to be wood. Add a little bit of texture and variety to it. It's starting to fill in a little bit. I did put a gate in, but I ended up having to move that gate because uh, it was off center. But this is a give you an idea of what it's going to look like. I also decided to take a break uh, from all of the harvesting, just harvesting endlessly, and went looking for an ankylosaurus. Could not find one. But I did find an Alpha T-Rex. So I proceeded to spend the next half an hour of my life randomly pecking at it with my Argent. Just like this. Uh, this is like the best way to kill an Alpha T-Rex without really, really high level dinos or weapons. So it just takes forever. And you have to be careful because these things, they do some serious damage. I mean like scary, scary damage. Get all of that experience pumped in and leveled up. And go home and have a barbecue with all the prime meat that they gave us. I didn't find an Anki, but I did find a Doughy. And it was too high level to not tame. So I took it home, knocked it out. And then let it tame up while I finished working on harvesting and building the building here on day 16. Just constantly grinding wood and stone. At some point I'll be done working on this building, this base. It's probably one of the most impressive bases I've ever built. Uh, right now I put it in second place, but the other one I had help with. Like I was part of a like a six or eight person tribe. So now I put this gate on the second floor. Also, that other base was out at the Hidden Lake. Very picturesque. And here's our Dodic. So now we have a much higher level Stone Gatherer, which means a higher level Anki and a higher level... Uh, I want to keep calling it a very It's a higher level Beaver are uh, in the pipeline at some point soon. The Anki I did eventually find when I was out harvesting penguins. Which I, I heard an extra one, and I didn't see it, but I had the Anki. I wasn't going to leave it in danger, so I just brought it home, and I knocked it out. And then tamed it. And here is Spike, the Yankee. So, there you go. There are uh, up to day 16 now. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I, I tried to do the recording all in one take this time. Instead of chopping it up into bit by bit by bit. I hope it flows a little bit better. Uh, if you guys liked it, leave a like. Leave a comment telling me how I can improve. Or give me ideas of what else I can do in this series. I got some ideas on where to go, but uh, the grind for the tower continues as the second floor is still not done. And I, uh, <laughs> I am so far away from fighting a boss fight. I might, I might be closer than I feel like I am, but it's still going to be episodes away for sure. Like I don't even have Rexes yet, or UDs or anything. But yeah, uh, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. Remember, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff if you can. 
It helps the channel out, especially being such a small channel. I need all the help I can get, and I very much appreciate it. But thank you for watching this video. I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.